So thanks everyone for joining me for this impromptu little video. Melanie Keane has kindly joined me because she's going to be at the show and we were just thinking about ways that we could give you tips on what to look out for at the show and so you can make the most of it. So welcome Mel, it's great to see you. Can you just tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do? Thank you Jackie, it's great to see you too. So my name is Mel and I started sewing three years ago at the beginning of the Covid pandemic making scrubs for the NHS and so that gave me the confidence to start making my own clothes and here we are a few years further down the line. I run a refugee sewing project in Guildford, Surrey so that's a weekly group where the women come along to make their own clothes and repair their clothes and I can't believe that I'm actually running it. <laughs> With help, of course. You're doing brilliantly. I love that project. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And so we spoke originally in our episode on learning to sew in your 50s, episode 50. So if you haven't listened to that before, then everybody do definitely go and listen to that, where Mel shares a bit more information about how she got started and her sewing journey. And I still can't get over how much she's done in such a short space of time. Puts me to shame. <laughs> So today we're chatting about the Knitting and Stitching show. It's a massive show, uh, and I know mm -hmm. they run it in different places, but this is the one that's coming up in October at Alexandra Palace. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking about ways that we could help people enjoy it, because I've been to these shows and they can seem a bit overwhelming. Yes, yeah. So Mel, let's dive into what tips have you got for the listeners to help them prepare before going to the show? Okay, well, my number one tip is to do your research. Have a look at the exhibitor list, and also look at their websites uh, and mark down the stand number so that you make it a priority to visit these stands first. But really, you need to decide what you want from the day. So are you going to look at fabrics or notions? Are you going for ideas? Are you going to learn a new skill at one of the workshops? Or are you looking for a new sewing machine? Or maybe it's a mixture of all of these. So make yourself a list and have a think about your budget. But if there is anything on the website from these stands that are there that you would really like to buy, then I would suggest emailing them in advance just to check that they're going to bring that product with them because I've been, I slipped up on that. I saw that the company were going to be there. I was expecting to buy something, but then they didn't have it. So, yeah, that's a really good tip to make sure if there's something in particular you want to see, then, yeah, that definitely is worth doing. Yeah. Also, make sure you know what time the show opens and closes so that you leave yourself enough time to do yeah. everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the yeah. first thing I do when I get there is to do a sweep of the hall to familiarise myself with the different levels and where everything is. And then I make a beeline for the stands I want to visit and anything after that is a bonus. Great tip, because there's over 200, I think, different organisations there, aren't yeah. there, this year? And quite a few other things like, I think there's a, a knitting area and a yarn area and yes. a quilting area and those kinds of things. I'll put a link so you can have a look at their website. The great tips in terms of deciding what's your priority for the show. Yeah. That leads me nicely into just talking about what are the benefits of going to the show versus maybe buying online. The first benefit for me is the atmosphere when I enter the hall. There's one of excitement because we're all there because we love sewing. We want to talk about sewing. We want to buy things. So it's a very welcoming, exciting atmosphere. Yeah. And I think it connects you with the community because sewing can seem a bit isolating, can't it? When you're just doing it on your own at home, it can seem like you're just doing it on your own. So I think that's, yeah. that's great to be able to go and connect with other people that are of that mindset. Yes, yeah. And to be able to touch the fabrics, to see the drape, to feel the stretch, you can shine a light on the fabrics or take it to daylight just to see how it looks, what it feels like and whether that's something that you really want to buy. Yeah. The other benefit is connecting with people, with the stand holders and the other people there too. Have a chat with them, get to know them. But the last show I was at, which was the London Design Centre show, I saw a lady wearing a beautiful blouse. And so I went up to her and she was so flattered that I liked her outfit. So we had a long chat about the pattern and how she made it. And I even took a picture of her. Brilliant. So I bought the pattern and made my own version. 
What was the pattern, Mel, just out of interest? It was the Liberty the Boho blouse. I don't oh. know if you've seen it, Becky, but it's got unusual sleeves because it's got a little cuff at the top and then it's gathered going into a full gather with a long cuff. So it's quite an unusual sleeve construction. So yeah. it's quite striking. Fantastic. Fabric like this lady and uh, if you're listening thank you very much. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So any other benefits of actually being at the show? There's such a variety of things there and you get so many ideas from uh, listening into people's conversations or just striking up conversations. Um, so then you get to think of, think outside the box. You might look at a a different pattern or a different style and it just gives you um, a bit of a boost and ignites your your sewing passion yeah I think there's lots of inspiration there isn't there not just in mm. the workshops but even on some of the stands you know for some of the fabrics where they've made them up and you've got examples of things that you could do or ideas yeah. and things like that aren't there yeah and lots of tips as well um tips on sewing zips or particular types of interfacing how to use bias binding in a in a new way just lots of new things that you can just pick up yeah I think the last show I went to was where I learned about how many different types of sewing needles there were because unless you know you, you don't need to go and even look do you but I was on a no. stand I think it might have been the barnyard stand and they yeah. were they had lots of great information on their stand and yeah. lots of great haberdashery and things and yeah. that's where I picked up loads of different examples like leather needles and all kinds of things that I thought mm. well, I'm sure I'll yeah. use that at some point but yeah I think it's a great way to connect with stuff that you might not have seen before or get new ideas yeah barn yarns is on my list i love their selection of needles and threads so i'll be heading over to them to pick up some mariflex thread in as many colors as i can yeah we've been talking about that recently haven't we stretch thread <laughs> it's definitely been on my mind there's not that many fabric shops these days that are easy to get to are there so I think it's one of those places no. where you can at least see a lot of different fabric examples and find out about different suppliers because I've definitely yeah. seen more new people or more new companies when I've gone to yeah. those shows that I perhaps wouldn't have found on the internet without yes. knowing that yes and I live in Woking Surrey and the nearest place to buy fabrics for me would be in in London so this is an ideal opportunity to yeah. see all the companies at once. Yeah, definitely. One of the things that that presents for me as a challenge is, um, you know, you see all of these fabrics, there's almost too much, isn't there? So have you got any tips about how you can make the most of that and not get too overwhelmed in terms of choosing fabrics? Well, if you're looking for something specific, then take a swatch of your fabric with you and a snap of the pattern that you've got in mind. For that, I use a brilliant app called Stash Hub. So on there, you can record all the fabrics you have, all the patterns that you have, and the notions, so that at a show like this, you've got all the information that you need on your phone, all the fabric requirements, how long the zip needs to be. So that's great. You've got that all with you. Yeah. Uh, and also know your prices before you go, because the stands often have discount at the show but uh, remember that a bargain is only a bargain if you need it <laughs> great advice sage advice there mel yeah. <laughs> and you can always ask if they have a show discount yeah and you talked about feeling overwhelmed by the choice available so i've certainly experienced that and my first introduction to dovetail was a bit like that because she has so many beautiful fabrics in so many vibrant colours that I knew that I wanted something, but I didn't know what to choose. Yeah. So Adaku picked out something that I would never have thought of, and um, which I bought. And if you come to the stand on Thursday, you'll see me wearing my dress, which I'm really pleased with, and I've had so many comments on. Brilliant. So, uh, yeah, ask the people on the stand for advice hold the fabrics up against you get someone to take a picture try new things yeah great ideas great ideas and I think it's also a way to see fabrics and 
great combinations while you're there isn't it you know if you've got mm. like more of an outfit in mind I think it's easier to then compare and see where the fabrics go together because sometimes that yeah. can be a bit of a challenge can't it when you're ordering samples and stuff that can be quite hard it can one way around that though Jackie is if you you can buy a kit I love kits yeah so that I'm sure there's going to be a few stands there one of them is flying bobbin so they have kits both for dressmaking and for projects so if you buy a kit and it's got the fabric, the patterns, the ribbons, the trim, the interfacing, and I've helped Liz pack up some of those kits and I know they're all beautifully curated. Yeah. And yeah, so that's a good thing to do. If somebody gives you the first example in a kit of those different bits and pieces, then it's easier than if you wanted to source it yourself for the yeah. second one that you make or you know whatever you're doing isn't it so yeah I think yeah. kit's yeah. a great idea so we've spoken a lot about fabric Mel so are there any other things that the shows are really useful for helping you decide on well I think it's a great opportunity to have a look at sewing machines and to actually try them but I would advise that you do your homework first go online and select a few models that you would like to try and know your prices too and know the features that you're looking for, things that you could live without or things that you definitely want from a machine and just be specific. Otherwise, you could spend your whole day looking at machines and miss what else is going on in the show. Yes, definitely. And I think machines are one of those things where when you get to try them, you get a better sense of whether you're going to like them or not. Because yeah, yeah. there is a feel to a machine, isn't there? I've bought machines before and sent them back because when I started sewing with them, I just didn't really get on with them. There were particular features that I didn't really yes. like or things yeah. like that. So I think that's a great tip because it's a great chance to try a few in one place. Yeah, I think it's a good opportunity as well to connect with the sewing machine company. Yes. Because then you'll get a feel for their customer support uh, and whether... They'll, they'll listen to you if you have any issues with it. Yes, definitely. Great advice. So what kind of things do you think can catch people out at these kinds of shows, Mel? Be aware of your budget. But if you do see something special, then I would recommend that you buy it. We give you permission. <laughs> yeah, you'll only go home thinking, oh, I wish I'd got that. <laughs> walk around have a look at it walk around have a break and then come back to it and see if you still want it that's probably my tip on yeah. that yeah I did that at the design center it was a company called cloth atelier I went back to them three times <laughs> and then eventually yeah knew what I wanted yeah even though it's out of my budget but I, I did want it and I, and I love it so there we go which reminds me of one of my top tips is to never put your shopping on the hook on the back of a toilet door. Oh, yes, in <laughs> case you forget it. Well, I, I forgot my bag. Oh, my goodness. And panicked and ran around the hall looking for security to ask them if it had been handed in, lost property. But luckily, someone saw my bag, opened it, recognised the fabric and took it back to the stand where I bought it from. Wow. <laughs> So I went back to the stand and there it was waiting for me. <laughs> yeah, so great tip. Don't leave it hanging up on the toilet door. Yeah, definitely look after your stuff. Do you take any kind of trolley, Mel, or do you just carry it in bags or <laughs> <laughs> how much you plan to buy? <laughs> well, I, I don't take a trolley and I, I wouldn't recommend that really because these shows can be really busy. And if True. you've got a trolley then you're not going to be able to get to where you want to and you're going to be knocking other people, all those kind of things. So yeah. If you are going to buy a lot of fabric, which is, is quite bulky, then ask the stand if they will ship it to you. Because when we buy things online, we all have to pay postage and packing, so ask them to ship it. And it could benefit them as well because then they won't run out and they can just send it to you. And there is always places to um, hang your coats so you can hang your bags there too. That's a great idea. I always, uh, personally, I like to go to these shows on my own because I don't want to be tied down to someone else's schedule. <laughs> yes. But yeah. I do also like to meet up with friends and things, so I'll arrange a certain time to, to, to meet up, but not for a huge amount of my day. 
and also I, I tend to take a, a drink and some snacks with me maybe even a sandwich so that I can avoid the queues yeah and save time and yeah. money of course I can then spend on fabric yes <laughs> great tip and it gives you another bag once you've eaten your lunch another bag to put more stuff in <laughs> it does yeah yeah I will just add in that I'm a member of a group called Surrey Sews yeah and if you are in Surrey we're having a half hour meet up on the Sunday at 11 o'clock so if you follow the hashtag on Instagram then I'll put up where we're going to meet yeah brilliant have you booked on any workshops Mel? I haven't booked onto any workshops I think they're a great opportunity for people if you want to learn a new skill you've got the paid ones and they've got some free demos as well haven't they I think so you don't have yeah. to ne necessarily have pre-booked there's still some tips and advice and things for people yeah if you just um want to have a look at that there are lots of free demos and fashion shows and there's a lot of textile exhibitions as well yeah so I would suggest taking your snack and having a wander around whilst you refresh yourself and you can save time there too. Yeah, fantastic. So you're helping out at the show. Can you tell mm -hmm. people a bit about where you're going to be and what the stands are that you're working on? Yeah, so I'm going to be there for three of the four days. So for two of them, I'm going to be working with Adafu on Dovetailed, which is really exciting. I love her fabrics and patterns and things. And then for one of the days, I'm going to be helping Liz on flying bobbins. Yeah. I brilliant. really enjoy being on a stand because it just gives me a chance to, to meet like-minded sewers. Uh, I'm also a bit nosy. I like to know what people are making, um, which pattern they're going to go for. And I love showing them the samples because that's another tip, actually. Ask to see some of the samples of the fabrics made up into garments and then you can actually see them maybe sometimes just try them on so, yeah I think that's great inspiration because sometimes it's hard to know what it's going to look like made up and or know what to use that particular fabric for so flying bobbins can you tell people a little bit more about what that stand is going to be yeah well flying bobbins have a subscription sew along club so each month you you sign up and then you get a, a sew along with suggestions for a kit and the videos Liz produces are fantastic, showing you every single step. And then she's also got some kits, which I've been helping her to pack with the instructions and everything you need to make things like um, Christmas crackers or a weekend bag or an overlocker cover, sewing machine covers, things like that. I'm with Liz Flying Bobbins on Friday. OK, so people can find you there. So any last tips before we wrap up, Mel? Well, I'm really excited about going there. So just enjoy your day. And there's no rules about how long or short your visit is. Just treat it like a day out in London, going to the theatre, having something to eat. Enjoy yourself and enjoy your hobby. And I personally like to make a day of it. But if you've got a busy schedule, then just pop in and, and see what it's like. So then next time you can plan a longer visit <laughs> yes I think your tip about talking to people is really good I think that's probably mm. one of the key things that I would suggest is just make a few connections even if it's just to say hi and ask them what are you making because mm. it's just such a great environment to chat about people who've got the same passion mm. well I hope you really enjoy the show Mel and I hope it goes well on the stands that you're helping with I'm sure it'll be fantastic yeah. I really appreciate you taking the time to share those tips I'm sure the listeners will really enjoy the show as a result of that well hopefully I can share with you and your listeners things that I purchased yeah that would be brilliant so we'll do a, a, a wrap up after the show <laughs> great idea thank you very much for that thank you Jackie thanks Mel 